Good morning. Everyone knows the people who are here, I think, just in case. On my far left, Dr. Jim Malatris, not a real doctor. Dr. Not even a fake doctor, Robert Mejica, Director of the Budget. To my right, Melissa DeRosa, Secretary to the Governor. To my far right, a real doctor, Howard Zucker, Commissioner of Health. Good morning to all of you. Happy Memorial Day weekend it starts today. Summer is now upon us. This will be the 155th Memorial Day. The press gets to ask me questions. Here's my question for you guys today. Where was the first officially recognized Memorial Day celebration? No answer. No answer. Let the record show there is not a single submission from the assembled press. You guys should know Waterloo, New York, Seneca County, 1866. President Johnson declared Waterloo, New York the birthplace of the Memorial Day Parade. And as you are a press corps from the state of New York, I would hope that you, you Remember this going forward. And there's the sign, just in case you forget. Waterloo, New York, birthplace of Memorial Day. Today is it day 83 of the COVID-19 crisis. Some of my young guns saying, oh, it's 83 days. We haven't had a day off. It's Memorial Day weekend. Life is about stamina, stamina. It's Memorial Day weekend. Major, imagine if you were in a real war, overseas war, World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War. Day 83, it's nothing, tour of duty. News is good today. Hospitalizations are down. Net change in hospitalizations is down. Number of new cases per day is down. Uh, this is a l level now that is lower than when we first began, so that's good. Uh, number of deaths, painfully high at any number, right? Uh, and you see that this number has been stubborn on its way down, uh, but it's 109 yesterday. They were all in our thoughts and prayers. Again, you see how quick that spike went up, and you see how slow it is to come down. So we want to make sure we don't go back there ever, ever again. We're talking about reopening. The question is not whether or not you reopen. The question is how you reopen smart. How fast and safe can you reopen? Reopen as fast as you can, as long as it is safe, and you are safe if you're acting smart. What does smart mean? Phasing it in by metrics, just study what's happening. Continue to test so you can, you have an idea of the growth of the virus. Trace those cases, isolate those positives. Watch your hospital capacity and monitor what's going on so all your actions are based on data. We post all the data. Anyone can, in the state can go online, see where they are by their region. Uh, Long Island and Mid-Hudson region, if the number of deaths continues to decline the way it has, uh, and they get their tracing online, every region has a certain number of tracers that they need to reopen because we want to make sure when they reopen, they have the testing and tracing operation working. Uh, but if the number of deaths continues to decline, they get their tracing up and online. Both regions could reopen this week. In anticipation of that, we're going to allow construction staging. Phase one construction begins. Uh, before you can begin construction, you have to have staged the construction. The materials have to be on site, et cetera. The safety precautions have to be on site. So we're going to allow that construction staging now for the Long Island and the Mid-Hudson. Uh, we're hopeful that the number of deaths continues to decline, and then they would be reopening this week. 
Testing is a big component of all of this. New York State tests more than any other state uh, per capita. We test more than any other country per capita. So we are far ahead in terms of getting this operation online. And this is the first case. Nobody's ever done this before, putting together this tracing uh, and testing capacity. But we've signed up another 52 independent pharmacies. That brings the total number of sites in the state of New York to 750. And our message is very simple. Get a test. We have uh, state run sites where we have more capacity than we're now performing tests. We have some drive-ins where we can do 15,000 tests. We're only doing 5,000 per day. Get a test. If you have any symptoms of COVID, which are basically the same symptoms as the flu, if you have any symptoms, get a test. If you were exposed to a person who you find out was positive, get a test. Get a test. Uh, and you can go to this website and they'll tell you exactly the site closest to you. In terms of tracing, all the regions that have come online had to have the right number of tracers. That's where we're talking about Mid-Hudson and Long Island has to get their tracing numbers up. Uh, but every region has the tracing functioning. Mike Bloomberg, uh, former mayor of New York City, uh, volunteered to have his Bloomberg Philanthropies put together a tracing program because there is no such thing as a tracing program. How do you train tracers? How do you recruit tracers? Uh, how do you, uh, what software do the tracers use? Uh, they've been doing that with Johns Hopkins. They've been fantastic. Uh, we have that in place now. And we're going to share that with other states online, and we're going to do that with the National Governors Association, because New York is ahead, and uh, we do have more uh, advanced curriculum and training and protocols. So we're going to work with the NGA and make that available to any state that wants to use it. Small business is a priority. The federal government had passed the Small Business Assistance Program. Uh, that has run out of money. And small businesses are taking a real beating in this situation. Uh, they are 90% of New York's businesses. And they're facing the toughest challenges. The economic projections vis-a-vis -vis small business are actually uh, frightening. Uh, more than 100,000 have shut permanently since the pandemic hit. Many small businesses just don't have the staying power to continue to pay all the fixed costs, the lease, et cetera, uh, when they have no income whatsoever. Minority-owned businesses face a far greater risk and have received less in federal relief. So New York State is starting its own small business relief program, working with private banks. We have over $100 million available to make loans to small businesses. We're going to focus on MWBEs that did not receive federal assistance and focus on really small business. You know, the federal definition of small business has what many could consider large businesses. But we're going to focus on true small businesses, 20 or few, fewer employees, less than $3 million in gross revenues. People who are interested in participating in this program can go to the website that is on the screen. Uh, it's Memorial Day weekend. We expect people to be getting out, going to parks, beaches, et cetera. We understand that. Uh, but we have to remain vigilant at the same time. I know the weather is warmer. I know people have been cooped up. I know there's tremendous energy to get out. You have to remain vigilant. You read in the papers that they're talking now about a possible second wave or hot spots for places that have opened too fast or opened without testing and tracing or opened without doing monitoring. That would be the worst situation, is if we went through everything we went through, you start to reopen, you're not doing the monitoring and the vigilance, and it actually uh, winds up with another hot spot or cluster uh, or worse, frankly. And remember, we are still learning about this COVID-19 virus. And one of the things I find most infuriating is the facts continue to change with this virus. Nobody's fault. But 
since we didn't know about the virus, we had certain assumptions that quote unquote experts made, and those facts change from day one. From day one, it started that this virus was coming from China. So everybody's looking to the West Coast uh, from the West, and it turns out the virus came from the East, came from Europe, and it walked right through our airports, and nobody was screening, and no, no one was doing anything. And that it was not in March. It was coming here January, February, and March. The virus was here much before, much sooner than anybody knew. Uh, fact was, if you have the virus and you have the antibodies, then you're immune. So we can put together a workforce that can go back to work, people who had the virus and now have the antibodies. Now they're not so sure if you're immune if you have the antibodies. Uh, started, children were not going to be affected by the coronavirus. Now we're not so sure that children aren't affected, uh, and we're watching carefully this inflammatory syndrome that is starting to hit children who are COVID positive or have the antibodies for positive. Uh, most recently, CDC says uh, infected surfaces are not a major source of transmission. When we started, it was about infected surfaces and you could get it from infected surfaces, and that was a major problem. We have a very aggressive disinfecting campaign going on across the state uh, public transit, etc. Now the CDC says yeah, that's not a major source. It's airborne. It's droplets. That's a major source. If the major source, if they're right, uh, and the major transmission source is airborne, it takes you back to wear a mask. Wear a mask. And, you know, this reminds me in some ways of the education we campaign we went through after uh, we learned about the HIV virus uh, and transmission of the HIV. And I remember how many times and how long we uh, had to talk to people about uh, wearing a prophylactic and how it could make the difference between life and death. The mask can make the difference between the life and death. I know it's a small thing, it's de minimis, it doesn't look like much, but if it's now primarily airborne, you know the mask works. How do you know the mask works? First responders have a lower infection rate than the general population. Nurses, doctors in emergency rooms have a lower infection rate than the general population. How can that possibly be? Because they wear the mask, and they do the hand sanitizing. You feel out of control? You can't protect yourself? You can't protect your family? Yes, you can. That's what the mask does. You want to be in control of yourself? You want to greatly increase your odds? Wear the mask. By the way, I'm not just asking you. The mask is mandatory in public settings. Public transportation, if you're in a taxi or an Uber, uh, private carriers, or any time you are in public within six feet of another person. The mask is mandatory. It is not just a nice thing to do, a responsible thing to do, uh, for du citizen duty. It is mandatory that you wear the mask within six feet of another person in public. You don't have a right to infect another person. You don't. Look at the Constitution. Tell me where it says you have the right to infect another person. You don't. Uh, so, SMART, how do we reopen SMART? It's up to you. It's up to us. Uh, and that's both the beauty and the, uh, the conundrum of this situation. It is wholly dependent on social action wholly dependent on social action. You tell me what people do, I will tell you the results, period. Government can say whatever it wants. I can sit up here and say whatever I want. I can't control it. People can control it. May 5th, we announced a wear a mask in public uh, campaign, and we asked people to submit vi videos that, and we would pick the winner 
by vote of uh, the people, and the winner would become a public service announcement. We had over 600 submissions for videos. We showed you the five finalists that are now open for uh, voting. Here's another question for the Astute Press Corps. The voting has been open for two and a half days. You can go to a website now and you can vote. How many votes have been cast thus far on the website? How many people have gone to the website in two and a half days, watched the videos, and voted for the best video? What's the number of people who went to the website in two and a half days? No, I said there was 600. This is the, this is emblematic of my interaction with the press. I did not say that. I said 600 people submitted videos. Of the 600 submissions, five were picked as finalists. People could then vote on the five finalists. The question is, over two and a half days, you're all political geniuses. Over two and a half days, how many people do you think went to the website to vote for one of those five finalists? 50,000. 50? 5,000. 5? Five. Five? Sif? I'll go with 25. 25? 65,000 people. Isn't that amazing? Zach wins. <laughs> the competition is still open, and we're going to show you now five of the uh, runner-ups. I tell you, of the 600, all 600 are going to be put up. They are amazing what people did, really amazing. But we're going to show you five more of the uh, five of the runner runners-up. United we stand, and divided we fall. We mask up not just to obey the law, but to obey the laws of nature. We hope for immunity in our community. We pray for normality in this calamity. We want hope. I mask up not because I fear getting sick, but because I fear getting you sick. I mask up because days, weeks, or months of hot breath and acne bumps is better than knowing my wife will soon have to raise a fatherless son. Mask up. You see this mask right here, it goes over my ears. I can breathe through it well, so you shouldn't fear. <coughs> so, it stayed inside my mask. It's harder to get sick when we're covered, that's the trick. Masks, if you've never worn one before this pandemic. Masks, put one on, not too tight. Ear, ear, nose, mouth, keep on wearing your mask. <laughs> Very cool. See, a lot of the, on the submissions, uh, you know, they had to be the right length of time. They couldn't use copyrighted music. A lot of them used music that you couldn't, you can't just uh, appropriate and run as a commercial. But I tell you, real talent. Um, oh, jeez, I gave you the wrong number on the number of votes. I gave you last night's number. 
Number of votes, 92,000. 92,000. And you have a lot of late night voters, obviously. <laughs> the, what you see there, those ads, New York tough, smart, united, disciplined, loving. Mr. Governor, Sif? I have an annoying question.